that extreme life extension is finally possible, not just in their dreams, but in their life, in your life, but only if we do something about it. If we don't, it's just still a dream. The scientists language, uh, language oh, the, science, the science doesn't get developed until we raise enough money to get this off the ground, funded, and implemented. Now, we're looking at, um, we're looking at the um, science, and when people talk about extreme life extension, they, uh, when we're talking about actual age reversal, this seems to be a very revolutionary concept. Well, I'm here to tell you it's not revolutionary at all. This is a natural progression of medical science. This is the direction it's going in. It's evolutionary, not revolutionary. What may seem revolutionary is the speed at which we're going to be attaining this. And we're here to accelerate it because if we don't, Many of us are going to die unnecessarily. Many of the people we love are going to die unnecessarily. And when we do, we're going to be saving hundreds of thousands or millions of lives at a minimum. Our plan is to have this done by 2029. That's demonstrate the ability to reverse aging in a human being, in an older human being. That's our plan. Are we going to reach it by 2029? My opinion is, absolutely, with a lot of hard work, a little bit of luck, and a lot of perseverance and dedication. What if it takes 2039 or 2049? I, I really, nobody here really knows. And what is age reversal? I say demonstrate the capability. But however long it takes, is, it's, it's just another example another, it, it, of, uh, as to how important it is for you to take care of yourselves in the meantime. And I'm going to be talking a little bit about how to do that because the time you can add to your life with what we know today could open the window of opportunity for you to be able to take care of tomorrow's miraculous medical technologies that are being developed. The question is, and this is actually finally a choice, no longer a hypothetical question. Will you be part of the last generation to suffer, decline, and die from aging? Or will you be part of the first generation to enjoy open-ended health and youth and vitality and everything else that goes along with it? It's a choice. And a lot of what we decide here and come up with today in, the, in our brainstorm session to follow is going to determine how many people make the boat and how many people miss the boat. Now here's a question that probably nobody's ever come up with, uh, at least in this room, or most people had never considered, but how can America lose 14% of its gross national product every single year, almost $2 trillion, and not even notice? Well, Rob Freitas, is Rob here yet? Hi, Rob. Yeah, Rob Freitas came up with some really interesting statistics and he found that insurance companies, plane crashes or other uh, calamities, insurance companies put a value on each human life anywhere in the world at a, of about $2 million, regardless of age, regardless of economic, uh, uh, your, your economic situation. Well, we lose about 52 million people around this world from natural causes. People die from natural causes. So if you multiply that times 2 million, we lose about $100 trillion of human capital is destroyed, wiped out, gone forever. Every single year. This happened in 2005. It happened in 2006. Every year since then, it's happening this year, and it's going to happen next year, and it's going to keep on happening until we start slowing that down. Now, the global net worth is only about $100 trillion, so we l essentially lose the entire tangible net worth of this world. I mean, it's in human capital, but human capital is what makes everything else work. Human capital is what creates all the cash, all the reserves, all the real estate that we see, all the stocks and bonds. This is all human capital, and we lose it every year. Nobody notices this until Rob came up with it. He also suggested that each person has one book in them. We all have lives. Our lives are, for the most part, if you're here, your life is probably pretty damned interesting. And even if it's not, you still have a book in you. 
Many people here wrote books. Some people here wrote many books. Joe Sugarman wrote, I don't know, six books. I don't know, Mark Victory Hansen, just saw you walk in, Mark. Uh, he, he just a book machining. Mark, please sit up here at the head table. Um, the, um, but when we die, those books disappear. 52 million people die of natural death in 2005. That means 52, 52 million books were destroyed, about three times as many books as we have in the Library of Congress. Again, last year, this year, next year, the year after, this is going to stop. So death is not a good thing. Now, besides the economic loss, we have a tremendous amount of premature suffering and death. Aging, death from aging, costs us 100,000 lives every single year, and we, we're used to it. We accept this. And of course we do, because there's never been an alternative before. Soon, we won't need to accept this. We won't just get used to it. We're going to get used to something far better. We have soaring health care costs that are, in addition to the economic loss of people, of lives that we lose, health care costs go through the roof as people near uh, the age of death. Not to count the suffering and the caregiving, the emotional and, uh, cost of caregiving and the economic cost of caregiving. So how does society benefit? Well, this, is, this should be pretty obvious, but I mentioned our most valuable assets are preserved to help solve all the other problems facing society. What's the, what are our most valuable assets? Human beings. The older you are, by definition, the wiser you are, the more you have to contribute to society, the more you can teach to other people, the more and better equipped you are to solve all these problems that we're facing in society that, 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 that grab the headlines. And the one that doesn't grab the headlines is, is 100,000 people die every day from aging. And this is the solution. If we want these problems solved, keep the smartest, most valuable people alive. You say, ultimately, we're going to be able to deliver extreme life extension, age-reversing technologies to everybody on this planet 